at the beginning, we were, as many other movements referring to Islam, more revivalist than reformist. So the vision of women, their role, and both in public life or in family, was, let's say, a classic, like any vision of Muslim women, mothers, etc., educators. Yet, very soon, I think that our Tunisian culture, because we are also Tunisian women, started influencing us. The personal status code is the very advanced and progressive legislation voted by Bourguiba, so by the modern state, and forbidding uh, polygamy, forbidding forced marriages, and um, uh, implementing equality between men and women in work, wage, etc., and many other measures. And of course, making divorce uh, a matter uh, that shall be uh, settled by courts and not by ma'zum. These are, let's say, some elements of the personal states codes. So we ask the question, is it a code accepted by our movement or rejected? The discussion was very hard, but by the mid-80s, the issue was settled. Personal states code is ours. When despotism and the regime of Ben Ali imprisoned a great number of men, members of Nahda, and some others were exiled, this obliged women, uh, let's say, as wives, daughters, mothers, sisters of political prisoner to react and to become leaders. The legacy of dictatorship is separating people. And we were portrayed as head-scarved women, women with hijab, women accepting to be inferior to men, etc. this stereotype. So other Tunisian women, those who benefited, like us, from the personal states code, said, OK, but what is going to happen to Tunisia after the revolution? Are we going to lose our status? Does this party referring to Islam will bring us back to uh, the past? And there was a lot, great deal of fear. In our dialogue as Tunisian women, we dissipated this fear and we built a common ground. A ground for Tunisian women asking for equality, equal opportunity, and human dignity. And saying our rights are human rights.